Hello and welcome to Java Games Programming. I'm your host Zan from Zans Gaming, and in this tutorial we'll start off with planning Connect 4. So let's get started. In terms of game mechanics, Connect 4 is very much similar to Tic-Tac-Toe and Snakes and Ladders, both games we've programmed before. The way this game works is we have a 6x7 grid and we have two players. The first player has red tokens while the second player has uh, yellow tokens. This is similar to tic-tac-toe where one player has X's, the other one has O's, um, and players play it within a grid, sim once again similar to um, tic-tac-toe and even snakes and ladders there. Uh, the purpose of the game is to connect four of your tokens either diagonally, vertically, or horizontally. Uh, once again similar to uh, tic-tac-toe where you have to connect three in a row. The difference between uh, this one and tic-tac-toe is that you can't just play your token anywhere. You play column wise and you have to go to the bottom of the column or the first spot available. So if you were to place in the first column the next turn, uh, we would have to play it in the second row, second bottom row, because the first bottom is actually taken. The first player to reach is four tokens uh, in a row. So an example here, these are four yellows horizontally, wins and you're trying to block the other player from connecting four while you're trying to connect four yourselves. So the game plan is similar to what we saw in Snakes and Ladders. We're going to first figure out the entities involved in the game. We'll try to convert them to classes and then figure out how they interact with one another. Once again, we have the world as one of the entities. This is where everything takes place. Uh, this is where the players play the game. We have the grid. This is what the players play on. We have the players themselves, and then we have the tokens, so uh, red and yellow in our case. Uh, so similar to what we saw in Snakes and Ladders, our world would turn into our driver. So this is what controls the main game loop. Our grid is, eat, is a 2D array, which, uh, which specifies what tokens are, are in which position, and uh, which spaces are available. So this is a lighter version of what we saw in Snakes and Ladders because in Snakes and Ladders we had our own original class for the grid. In this case we're just using a simple 2D array, either an integer if you want to store tokens as 1 and 2 or some other numeric values or we can have it as a character array where we can store tokens by the color you know R and Y. Keeping in mind this is still a text-based version we are working with. Uh, the players would be classes of their own and it would just specify what the capabilities of the players are. In this case, it would specify the token color that they have and uh, how, did, how did they take their turn. Last but not least, we have the tokens themselves, red and yellow, and this would be either an int or char type, depending on how we want to specify our grid. So this, these are very highly related to one another, and they just specify um, the type of token for the player. Now, how these classes are going to interact with each other is that the world is going to contain the grid, the players and the ability to check win conditions. So the world kind of has uh, the game configuration and it just takes care of everything or rather uh, has control over everything. Uh, the player one has red tokens, player two has yellow tokens, they go in turn. On a player turn, uh, he or she chooses an available column to place their token in the grid. And then the token falls on the next available spot in that column. Uh, at the end of the turn, we check for win conditions. There are um, three types of win conditions. So once, if we have four uh, connected tokens in a row, there could be either a vertical win condition, horizontal, or diagonal. Now keep in mind diagonal would be either um, top left to bottom right or bottom right to, sorry, bottom left to uh, top right. So these are the win conditions and this is a very basic introduction plan for Connect4. In the next tutorial, we'll actually get started with the programming and see how this project comes along. So see you next time.